Hello divers, and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, or videos, I'm not sure yet, uh, I'm gonna show you how what, what I think is one of the hardest parts of building uh, underwater ROVs, and that is building the electronics enclosure, which ideally should stay dry. So to do this, I'm gonna show you how to do it with two uh, GoPro dome covers. So they're really good pieces of hardware to do this with because they're designed to keep electronics dry underwater. When we're putting together our ROV kits, we drill 11 holes into our domes. One for the ethernet connection, and the other 10 supply power to the motors and to the key you use to start the ROV. So if you're just gonna be drilling out a dome once, uh, I would recommend build your electronics assembly first and then figure out where on the dome your entry points are gonna work best for you. Uh, for us at Blue Dot ROV, we actually sacrificed a couple uh, domes to use as templates since we're doing it over and over again. But yeah, if you're just gonna be doing this as a one-off project on your own, then I would say, you know, go for it, experiment, and be confident. So I think that's all I had to start with. Uh, now I think we can get into actually building our enclosure. To start out, we will need one of our acrylic GoPro domes. Notice how this one has 11 holes drilled in the side. We'll talk about those locations later. We will also want a T-plug Y harness with one male end and two female ends. I also cut the positive line for reasons we'll talk about later. And to go through 10 of the paired holes, we're going to need 10 uh, what I call self-sealing machine screws. They're just uh, half inch 632 machine screws and these little O-rings. These O-rings have an inner diameter of one eighth of an inch and an outer diameter of a quarter inch. And you can pick up a set of 10 of those at the Amazon link in the description. We're also gonna want 10 of these 632 nuts. We'll also use four four inch lengths of 16 gauge speaker wire. And for our ROV's tether, we'll use 100 feet of Cat5 ethernet cable. You'll also want a small screwdriver as well as a pair of needle nose pliers. And finally, you will need some epoxy. First, I stripped about six inches of sheath off the end of the ethernet cable. Now I'm gonna feed all of these little wires through the ethernet hole at the bottom of my dome. It should be a pretty tight fit, but once you get all of those wires then you should be able to pull and push them uh, into the dome until the uh, sheath uh, butts up against the outside of your sphere. Next, you'll want to sand the area surrounding that entry point, both on the outside and the inside of your sphere. Now you can start mixing your epoxy. I like to start with an amount that looks like it can cover the area that you just sanded, but if you feel like that's not enough, you can always add more later. Now that the epoxy is mixed, we can start sealing that ethernet entry point. This should be a pretty intimate process. Try to get epoxy in between every single one of these little wires. That way, water won't be able to force its way through any crevices. Fill up every single gap you can see. Then pull the wires in just a little bit more until the sheath is flush against the outside of the dome. Layer more epoxy around the outside of the ethernet cable where it meets the dome. Be super generous with how much epoxy you're putting. It's unlikely that you'll be able to add too much epoxy. So just make absolutely sure that it surrounds every crevice, just like we did when we were sealing the inside of the cable. Once the epoxy sets, 
you should have a clear mound of epoxy surrounding the whole ethernet cable. In the ROV business, we call this potting your entry point. Next, we'll flip the dome over and start unraveling every single one of these wires. Set each wire so that it points radially away from the entry point. Mix more epoxy, then take a dab of it and place it right in the middle of that entry point. Make sure it surrounds every single wire. Add more epoxy. Make sure that the epoxy bonds around the base of every single wire as well as to the area of the dome that you sanded. This extra inner layer of epoxy might seem superfluous, and hopefully it is. This is just to make absolutely sure that no water could possibly get in here and damage your electronics. So once we're convinced that the epoxy is covering everything, we'll let it set for a couple minutes. In the next videos, I'll show you how we crimp these wires so we can turn this cable into an ethernet port that we use to control an ROV. All right guys, I hope this helps you get building. I will see you next time.